If you've decided to use Fedora as your main Linux distribution, chances are you're looking for a very stable, very functional, very easy to use Linux distribution, because that's really what Fedora is. Now, if you've just installed Fedora, there are several things that you should do in order to get it to be the absolute best it can be. So today what I'm going to do is take you through five things that you absolutely should do the minute you install Fedora 35. Now, there is going to be actually six things you should do. The first one we're counting it as number zero, simply because this is a tip that I give in every one of these videos and it applies to pretty much every single Linux distribution. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the very first thing you should do on Fedora and every single Linux distribution is update it. So in order to do that on Fedora, you can either open up the software center, which is looks like this, and then go to updates, and now update the vast majority of everything. I'm personally not interested in updating anything through a GUI, but if this is the way you're used to doing updates, it's perfectly fine to do it this way. But I'm going to show you another way to do it. So if you open up a terminal, so you can do that by going to the applications search bar thing here and type in uh, terminal. This is going to bring up GNOME terminal. I'll zoom in so everybody can see. Do sudo. That way you have uh, root privileges, which you'll need in order to update the system. Do DNF which is the package manager for Fedora, and then update, and then hit enter, enter your password, and then it will synchronize the, the mirrors. It will then update the system after checking for updates. This will be fairly slow to begin with. We will work on speeding it up afterwards, but this is the first thing you should do. At some point, it will likely ask you if you're sure you want to update, just enter the letter yes, and then hit enter and it will continue on updating. As you can see, I have quite a few updates, so I'm gonna cut the video and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, once that's done, it's time to move on to the next thing, which is enabling the RPM Fusion repositories. And what these do is basically they allow you to install packages that aren't included in the default Fedora repositories, things that they aren't able to include simply because they're either non-free or there are some other standard or restriction that goes against the Fedora ethos. So they don't include these by default, but they're really easy to install. So the first one you want to do is the free repository, which only contains free software, but has other restrictions, which is why they don't include it. So you do that by using this command here. Now I will include both of the commands that you need in the video description. And once you've done that, you'll hit enter. It will ask you for your password again and it'll do that and then it's done, it's really easy. And then you also want the non-free repository which will allow you to, to install uh, software that is licensed under non-free licenses, things like Google Chrome and so on and so forth. So that command looks exactly the same, it just has a different URL and then we'll enter and then that's done. So that is enabling the RPM Fusion stuff. Really once you've done that, it's uh, kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing. You only ever realize that you even have those things enabled uh, when you go to install something that comes from those repos. And even then, it will just be a seamless thing. It'll, it'll, everything will still be installed like this. sudo dnf install whatever the package name is. So you could do something like audacity or vlc or something like that and then just do that and then it will install it just like normal. Uh, whether it comes from one of those repos that we just added, you'll probably never even know. Now while that's installing, we'll just let it install. The next thing you want to do is open up Firefox. It looks like it's asking me for something here. And then we want to go to flathub.org. Because the next thing we want to do is enable Flathub. Flathub on Fedora is not enabled. Flatpaks are installed, but you can't actually install anything from Flathub, which is, it's a weird thing because, uh, and it all has to do with the things that Flathub will offer. So. Flathub allows you to install things that are proprietary and Fedora by default ships nothing that is proprietary. So uh, outside some kernel blobs, but that's beside the point. The, the point is, is that they don't include Flathub by the by default simply because it provides some proprietary software. So you have to set up this by yourself. So the, what you want to do is hit this quick setup button here, wait for it to load, hit the Fedora icon, and then copy this URL right here. Now you can download the repository file and then use 
uh, GNOME software in order to do this. Either one will work. I'm going to use this command thing as I already have a terminal open. I'm just going to copy that. Control Shift V to, to paste. Hit Enter. It's going to ask you for your password. And then you're done. Now the next thing you want to do, seeing how we've updated the repos, we've added some repos, and we've updated the system, we want to reboot. So we'll just do sudo reboot, and it'll reboot the system. Now that you have FlatHub installed, you can install flat packs from FlatHub if you want. So if you open back up Firefox, and it should bring take us right back to FlatHub, we'll hit the back button here a couple times. And let's just say we wanted to install Spotify. You can either use now the GNOME Software Store. So if you hit install, it'll bring up the GNOME Software Store, and then you can hit the install button. I find that's really slow. Just obviously, as you can tell, that's still loading. Uh, just I'm just go away. Uh, I find it easier just to copy this command here, open up a terminal, paste it, do this, hit yes, hit yes again, and it will install it. That's literally all you need. It may or may not ask for your password. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. That's really as simple as it is. And you can now install the entire breadth of flat packs from FlatHub without any problems at all. So the next thing you'll want to do is actually install a particular flat pack. And that flat pack is called GNOME Extension, if you can spell manager. And it looks like this here. Now, this is a addition to this app here. This is the extensions uh, managers by that is developed by the GNOME guys and it's all this does here this one here is it allows you to turn applicate or turn extensions on and off that's all it does you can't install extensions from that app but you can from this one so that's why I recommend this one over that other one so we're, once Spotify is in, done installing here which it should be very very soon we will take this command here copy it go back to our terminal control shift V to paste and paste this in yes once, yes again, and let it actually install, and then I'll show you what it does. Okay, once that's installed, you can open up the program that you just downloaded by typing in extensions manager, and or either just ext, that's really all you need, and then this thing will come in close to Firefox now. What this does is it does the job of the extensions manager, which is the official way to manage extensions. So you can turn the installed extensions on and off and uninstall them and all that stuff. But it also allows you to install GNOME extensions. So let's just say we wanted to install dash to dock, dash to dock. And that's right here. We'll hit install, confirm, and that's it. Dash to dock is installed and now appears in this list here. That's why this application here is so powerful. Now, if you want it, if you want more information on this extension here, I have made a video dedicated to GNOME Extension Manager. I will link that in the cards above my head somewhere uh, and, and in the video description. Okay, so the next item on the list is to try to make DNF a little faster. Now, as you've noticed, you know, it's actually worse for me because I didn't actually do, I had to actually live through the entire process of updating the system. It took about five or six minutes. So as you probably have noticed, DNF is pretty slow. And in order to speed that up a little bit, there's a couple things that you can do. So the first thing we want to do is open up terminal again. A lot of this stuff is, is does is done in the terminal. I apologize for that, but it's just the way it is. Uh, you can, obviously, if you wanted to do the same thing I'm about to do, going through the file manager, finding the file that we're going to edit, and then use a GUI text editor, but it's just easier for us to do this in the terminal. So the, what you want to do here is you want to navigate to this file. So what you'll want to do is cd into slash etsy dnf, and then we're going to open up a file called dnf.conf. So you can do this in any text editor that you prefer. I usually prefer Vim, but Vim is not installed by default on Fedora and I'm just not gonna install it. So I'm going to use nano. So what we're gonna do sudo nano and we're gonna do dnf.conf. Okay, and it's gonna ask you for your password. And now what you'll wanna do is type in the following. Oops, I'm not in Vim. <laughs> we wanna type in fastest m i r r o r equals true okay and then you want to save this so in, in nano it's control x 
Y for yes, enter for saving, and that's done. Now, what that should do is choose the closest possible mirror for you, and that will mean faster download speeds. It will not affect the, the speed of DNF once everything is downloaded, because that is more reliant on your hardware. If you're on a slow you know, computer that always has a couple cores or whatever, it's going to be slower than if you have more cores. And that's all you really have to do in order to enable fastest mirror. You don't have to reboot or anything. Just the next time you run DNF, it will go faster. So let's just see if we can actually try that out. So we're going to CD back into the home directory. We don't really need to do that, but I don't like staying in Etsy just in case. Uh, so we want to do sudo DNF install audacity. Let's just try that. And then yes. And there you go. That was way, way faster. Now, it's, some of that is that Audacity is a much smaller piece of software than VLC, but still, it was definitely faster than it was. Okay, so the last one on the list is where I would usually tell you to install GNOME Tweak Tool. And GNOME Tweak Tool is still a really good tool for you to use in order to change themes, change the way GNOME behaves, like adding a min minimize button and so on and so forth. The problem is, is that GNOME Tweaks, at least on my edition of Fedora, is broken. Like, I installed it, it won't launch. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, perhaps you'll have better chance than I will. Maybe it's a problem with the VM I'm using. Uh, but that's a little bit of a bonus tip for you. If you can get it to install, GNOME Tweaks is actually still a really good option for you. But instead, I've had to come up with a fifth one that is different. So... What we're going to do instead is call, install an application called Fetty. Now, what Fetty does, apparently, is it allows you to install applications, development tools, drivers, themes, tweaks, and utilities. So, we're going to install this thing, and I'll show you what it does. So, the, in order to install this, we're going to need the terminal, because it is not in the default repo. So, we're going to uh, go into a terminal here, zoom in again, and we're going to need to enable a certain repo. And it's done. that's done with this command here. I, again, I will put this in the video description. Hit enter, enter your password, hit, hit yes, and then it should be done. And the next thing we we'll want to do is do this command here, which is just going to install Fetty. It won't take very long, and then we're done. So what we're going to do now is actually launch Fetty. So we'll open up the applications drawer, type in Fetty. Hit enter, and then this is what Fetty looks like. Now, as you can see, there are things here that it allows you to do. It will allow you to install a ton of applications. A lot of this stuff here is not going to be in the default GNOME software stack. So you can install things like Spotify and Slack and Skype and all that stuff. A lot of this stuff is proprietary, and you won't find it in the GNOME software center. It will also allow you to install several development tools, which is going to be like CLI tools uh, and uh, IDEs and stuff like that. Same thing with drivers. Things like your NVIDIA driver and your like, Wi-Fi driver can be installed from here. That Those things can be installed through the GNOME Software Center with some tweaking, but this seems to be a little bit easier. You can also install a whole bunch of different themes. Now, the problem is you'll have to have GNOME Tweak Tool in order to actually use these things. So I'm not going to be able to show you how to actually switch to those themes, but you could install them from here. Same things with tweaks here as well. And you can also install several utilities here. Now, basic, so basically what Fetty does is it allows you to install things that aren't traditionally available in the GNOME tweak tool or in GNOME software uh, that, so in, in an easy way. So you won't actually have to use the terminal in order to install them. So those are the things you need to do in order to make Fedora even better than it is out of the box. And I find these tips to be almost essential when you're using Fedora because especially things like making DNF a little bit faster, things like yeah, enabling GNOME extensions and easily being able to install them uh, without having to deal with like a browser extension and all that stuff. Those things are just doing these few small things makes Fedora so much easier and e pleasant to use, even if you don't decide you want to customize GNOME at all. Even if you're one of those guys who likes vanilla GNOME, right out of the box, there's chances are there's at least two or three extensions that you still use. Things like icons on the desktop, or maybe the extension that allows you to put things in your taskbar and whatever. Uh, especially if you use things like Dropbox or whatever, you would want that icon up in the top. The point is, is that these tips will allow you to 
take Fedora just a little bit further, even if you don't decide to use all the things that this stuff enables you to do. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts or things that you do on Fedora to make it even better, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Robert, Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred, Kramer, Meglin, Jack, Knife, and Tools, Steve, A, Cyborg, Linux, Garrick, Samuel, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, Andy, Ross, Merrick, Camp, Josh, Willie, j Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Bandit 6, Primus, and PM. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.